TV Today's managing editor Rahul Kawal spoke to Mahindra Group chairman and managing director Anand Mahindra in Brisbane uh, on his take on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's debut at the G20 summit. Take a look. In Brisbane, the Prime Minister is pushing hard on black money. But what does India Inc. make of the Prime Minister's attempts? We've seen several banks try to resist the entire attempt to try and open up uh, global bank accounts. The Prime Minister is also pushing on jobs and on global trade. Joining us now, one of the leading lights of India Inc., Anand Mahindra, who's here in Brisbane tracking the business side of the Prime Minister's visit. Thank you very much, sir, and welcome to Headlines today. I want to begin by asking you about black money. That's been the key thrust area uh, for the Prime Minister. There's a lot of pushback from banks especially. They're not very happy with the way the Prime Minister is trying to push things through. How much of a concern is it for corporates and for banks that if, uh, if the global convention on black money comes through, it will make tougher for corporates to do business and there will be Big Brother watching all the time? You know, Rahul, what's happening uh, is that there is a kind of global convergence on this problem. We call it black money. But from a point of view of global nomenclature, it's tax evasion, and every country in the world is cracking down on it. In fact, what they call the wrongful displacement of tax to another domicile by multinationals is a key focus of the G20 meetings. So it's not only the Indian government that is after black money. In a sense, the whole world is now seems to have lost its patience with places which enable and facilitate tax evasion. So I think um, no business community can afford to buck that trend. We can only hope that whatever happens, happens swiftly, that reforms, new policies are put in place quickly, and we all then begin functioning according to a new world order. We broke just last week the first draft report of the Committee on Black Money presented before the Supreme Court. And what it showed was that 289 of the 620 odd accounts had no money in them, that they'd been tipped off in advance, possibly money had been withdrawn. Now, how do you deal with a problem of that nature? That people find out that, say, whether it's the CBDT or the Enforcement Directorate, are going to be investing you, investigating you and you get time to pull your money out? Well, you know, uh, I have to say here in, in all honesty and in truth i am no expert in black money <laughs> and so i'm i'm hardly the person to tell you about what the manners are in which we can deal with this problem all i can tell you is that the world is looking for a more orderly system of taxation and for a more rational and fair system and i think india both the government and the business community have to go along with that flow. And what about the banks that are trying to resist, hold out, especially Swiss banks, that say that this goes against the ethos with which customers come in and start their accounts and therefore now it would be a breach of privilege if those account details are made public? I, I believe the Swiss banks are under extraordinary pressure from the US government to fall in line and to be more transparent. So I believe that transparency is going to be the order of the day every bank is simply going to have to fall in line okay let's come now to the trade facilitation agreement that is by far the biggest takeaway even though it didn't happen at the g20 but it's the biggest takeaway uh, of what's happened in the past 48 hours india finally getting the united states to agree to its concerns in food security as a leading corporate when customs imports and excise uh, imports and exports are liberalized how much of a difference do you think this will make to companies like yours and to icon you know there's an interesting analogy i can make that the current regime of trade rules and regulations are somewhat like the GST problem. That trade facilitation and the agreement that was hammered out at the WTO was in a way trying to make the world a common market and a, a market which common rules. So it's a no-brainer. It had to be done. Uh, I believe India's stand also was legitimate that there was no reason for this to be linked to food security of all issues. Why did we agree to it in future and why didn't we start working on this earlier to de-link and decouple the two? That is my only issue and I think that's where India has erred in just managing and packaging our concerns. We started working on it too late but perhaps it was the fact that we had an intervening election that got us all distracted. And unfortunately when push came to shove we had to hold out and 
and become and look as if we were stalling the process in order to we became a bit out. of a global villain we exactly we were painted like villains purely because of the modality and the manner in which we handled it our claims and our demand is legitimate happily now i hope this will be out of the way